I've discussed this in previous videos, but I'm going to repeat myself. I love fonts. A font has such power to portray an image and a message. I mean, linguistically, they send a message because they're usually letters, but there's more to it than that. It might sound a bit strange, but a well-designed font is such a beautiful thing. Today, I want to show you a couple of fonts that I love to use at the moment. I did a video in 2016 looking at titles, but things do change and fonts move, move definitely move with fashion. And something I would have chosen in 2016 would probably have shifted a bit further down my list by now. When it comes to choosing a font, you have two main initial choices. Firstly, is it going to be a serif font or a sans serif font? So, um, does it have those little flicks on? So in which case it's a serif font like Times New Roman or is it sans serif? So is it without those flicks? So something a bit more plain like Arial or Helvetica. And then you've got to decide whether you're going to use a fancy font or a subtle font. I mean, there's obviously more to it than that, but you get the idea. Once you've chosen your font, you then need to decide how you're going to use it. For me, the top four considerations are size, kind of obviously, weight, case, and kerning. If your font, I think if your font's going to form part of your brand or image, as opposed to just using it kind of as, as one-off use on like a poster or something, you should decide on the case and kerning and stick to it right throughout every use of it. Bear in mind that some fonts do look absolutely awful in lowercase. One of our brand fonts at work, for example, is designed uh, for use in uppercase, and people do break these rules, and it just looks awful whenever they do. Uh, before I begin, I have to stress that the three fonts actually that I'm looking at today are all commercial fonts. Buying a font might seem absolutely crazy to some, especially as there are so many free variants out there on so many free font sites and Google fonts and things, but not to me. I, to me, it's a worthwhile investment, and if you regularly produce video containing any kind of titles or text-based graphics, it's money well spent as far as I'm concerned. All right, first of all, let's start with Universe. Now, Universe is a commercial font that I've been using for ages, and it isn't typically the sort of font that I like, but I'm going to show you here anyway. I've got this kind of just generic, a little bit kind of 90s, I suppose, background, and uh, I'm just going to put my initial text on here and say... Um, my title here. So that's the default font that comes with Premiere. And I'm going to change this now. I'm going to zoom into the bottom right hand side of the screen where you can see my essential graphics section. And I've got all my universe variants here. And that's the great thing, of course, about commercial fonts is you usually get a huge variety, a full variety. A lot of the time, free fonts might only be kind of your bold weight or, you know, um, just like bold and maybe just italic or something. But when you pay for a font, you get every single possible combination and variant of that font. So here you can see there are loads of them under Universe. Uh, I'm, oh, by the way, correct. Uh, uh, please correct me on the pronunciation of any of my of any of the fonts here, because to me that's called Universe. I've always thought of it like that in my mind. It might be called something else. I don't know. So let's go here. You know, you've got this tiny, really narrow font. I would never really use this, but it can be really, really useful. This font is quite similar to Bebas Neuer. Um, Oswald is quite similar as well. Uh, the, it's very, very similar to those, but it's better. It's always been better in my mind. So let me just choose the one I want. I think it's 57 condensed. Yeah, this, this is quite a nice one. Very, very clean. But I think the main one I use, and in fact, it is the font that I use on my logo. If you look on my website at the top left hand side, you'll see this font used. And uh, we've just got to find out which one it is. Yeah, it's, I think it's this one. So it's 47 condensed light. But yeah, as I say, so many variants of this. You can just sort of scroll between them. I don't know why they bother putting things like that in. They're just awful. Um, but let's go to thin. Yeah, thin ultra condensed is a bit too much. 45 light just starts to look like aerial. So I think, it, yeah, usually it's 57 condensed that I would use. Oh, that one as well is okay. And the really useful thing about this font is it gives you a lot of horizontal space. So you can fit a lot of text in because it's a tall kind of slim font. You can fit a lot of text in. And I just, I just love this. It's really flexible. It's got quite a kind of serious look to it, quite a corporate look. 
and that's, I suppose, a downside of it. It doesn't suit everything, but it generally works somewhere on a title. You know, you could use it uh, just for a little bit of extra information, but as a main title, it could look a little bit brash and a little bit serious. But for me, I've always used it, and you'll see loads of my thumbnails on videos always used Universe before a certain point. And it was only after a while that I switched to my second font, and I'll jump to that now. So that's my first font of choice for today. That's Universe. My second font is one that I came across and started using, I think, at about the start of 2018. It's become much, much more common these days, and I think fonts have started to move into something a little bit more rounded and a bit more, almost a bit more friendly in their look over the last year or two. Uh, there's there's definitely been a shift away from slightly more serious looking fonts to something a little bit more, um, yeah, just a bit more fun, really. And Nexa is definitely along those lines. It's a, it's a gorgeous font. I saw it in a book and I used an app on my phone called What The Font. Uh, you can have a look at that. It's, a, it's presumably available for Android as well as iOS. But What The Font, you just point it at the font that you like and it will take a, you know, it just scans it and then it tells you what font it is or what tells you what font it possibly is and it found for me that it was nexa so i have always used this isn't nexa by the way uh, so i i purchased this you can get a free variety of this you can download just one type of nexa so here this is if i look at the bottom right hand side here you've got nexa bold that's the free one you can get that for free but this is the one i purchased so now i have all my variants in here so nexa thin and this is something you will have seen on loads of my stuff which i have to actually select my text here first before i do this nexa thin is really nice such a such a, a such a clean clean look to it but most of the time i will use thin sometimes use thin on titles a lot of the time i'll use book because it's just a little bit more you know you can see it a little bit more clearly but i'll also use bold as well uh, so and in fact i think i do also use heavy on a lot of my thumbnails you'll have seen in the past year have used nexa so they always use nexa heavy at the top because although it does take up a lot of horizontal space it is, I don't know, it's just such a bold, it's just, it just really stands out there. And it can also look great in lowercase as well. I'm not sure whether the heavy stuff will. But as a body text font, you could happily use this, I think. Maybe not in heavy, but let's just try that in, say, book. Looks great in lowercase. The lowercase letters are just, I don't know, I just really love the Nexa font. I wouldn't. I've kind of stuck to, to uppercase. I never tend to use fonts in lowercase at all because most of the fonts I'm using are for titles and I'll use them in uppercase. But yeah, this is a font you'll have seen across loads of my work in the last year and a half uh, since the start of 2018 when I found it in a cookbook it was. Scanned it, found out what it was, we looked online, bought it for like, I think it was about sort of 60 or 80 quid and have used it ever since, and I really love this font. So Nexa, that's my second font for today. All right, the final one is one that I've come across very recently. I don't claim it that it's a new font. Now this is, this is, one thing you will notice, by the way, that all these are really, these, particularly these last two, they're really similar. There, there are, there only has to be a real, real subtle difference between fonts but it can make a massive difference to how something looks. You know, some people might look at this and then switch to Arial and say, well, it's just look, it just looks the same. It doesn't. It, it's so, it, you know, there are just the tiniest differences in where the line joins the, you know, the section here, how far down this comes or how, what the angle of this is. Those tiny differences make a big, big difference. And that's why fonts, I just love the precision of fonts. Right. How many times can I say this word? How many times can I say the word font in this video? Never mind. Right, let's switch to the final one I'm going to use, and that's graphic. I oh, do like Hushka as well. Hushka is a great font. Graphic is something that I've come across recently, and I used it in a video um, that I did on um, Me Megapixel Madness video I did uh, very recently. And all the titles that I did within the 
video, all the kind of uh, graphical stuff I did in the video there, that was using the graphic font and it just looks fantastic. So this is the graphic font. See, I think that's suitably different. I don't really like it so much in its thin form, but it just looks great in say, in say bold, uh, no, no, not that bold, not, not that bold. Uh, looks Looks great in light. Looks fantastic and right. I don't know. This to me is a really, really nice font. It stands out great. Just let's uh, straighten this and probably make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, I mean, that I really like that. I think it looks wonderful. Uh, that's the graphic font. And again, this is a, a font that you can purchase online. You, know, you might be able to find a free version somewhere. But um, but I've purchased this font and uh, it's just a really, really nice font. And I can imagine myself using this more and more now, moving away from Nexa and probably starting to use the graphic font. Anyway, that's all I wanted to do on this video. And uh, so, I mean, let me just try and put them over some, some video. So, uh, put, put them over a bit of video here. So where would I... Where would I put this? Let me just shift this uh, down, down here, and uh, see what we got. Yeah, that looks nice. Yeah, medium, medium looks good. Again, you could probably do it a little bit smaller, but it's just so clear. And you get, the good thing with graphic is you get a little bit more horizontal space back because the letters are slightly slimmer. Uh, but no, it's nowhere near the kind of like corporate look of universe, but uh, but it's certainly a little bit more than the more the more kind of bubbly Nexa. Let me try this in lowercase. I don't think I've tried it in lowercase yet. Oh, that's nice. That's really good, isn't it? Really, really clear that. Anyway, if, you, if you're not like me and you don't like fonts particularly or don't see the big deal about them, then you probably uh, are wondering why I'm going on about them. But uh, if you do and you, uh, if you like these or if you have a particular favorite that uh, you'd like to share, please do put it in the comments below. And thank you very much for watching. I will speak to you soon.